Well, today we're gonna make a quick DVD using the least expensive DVD burner I could find on Amazon. That's right, this is what's next. So we have this box. I love the design of it. It's got some color to it. These were the different colors you could get. I went with black. It was the least expensive at roughly 12 US dollars. Uh, there is again here on the side is the different colors you could have. Nothing on the sides here. And then just some general information on the back. Model number SYIDDO20. Let's go ahead and get this thing open. So what do we get? Looks like we get a um, carrying pouch. We have cable in here, which is, it's a USB 3 connection. And then there's this one for power. So uh, they do give you a USB-C adapter. All right, that's cool. And then we have the DVD player itself. All right, we'll take a look at that. And hey, we do have an instruction manual or user manual, a single page on English. And it is true, we have a data connection and a power supply. And one of the intriguing things is we have this touch exit button with an indicator light. Um, there's also an exit button here. So you have two ways to exit the DVD or to eject. It says exit, but it should be eject. So, all right, let's take a look at the device itself. It's got some weight to it. There's that eject button on the front. It does show that it's a super speed USB 3. Uh, and also has the DVD ROM video and an R rewritable. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and it has that nice little shiny side to the left. But all in all, pretty decent. On the bottom we have some rubberized feet. So that should help with any sound dampening, not uh, vibrate too bad. Power supply DC 5 volt. It is the Yo 2 external DVD drive. And before getting this plugged in, I wanted to double check to make certain that it did say DVD rewritable or writable. Uh, and it does have, it says DVD drive, does say CD, RW drive, but DVD player. But down here it says DVD RW. So this may not even be a DVD burner. That'll be a bummer if that's the case, but we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. So we did plug in the one USB connection with the power, which goes into the top port. It's the round barrel plug. And then we have the USB three connection going in the bottom. Right now, nothing is working. One thing to keep in mind, this is not a very long cable. So uh, primarily designed probably more for laptops. But I'm going to say that already, even for the money at $12 US when I purchased it, this is already a winner and a loser at the same time. It's a loser downside because you need two power connect, you need two USB connections. But the upside is that they are separate cable connections. If any of those break, I could just buy some new ones off of Amazon. So let me go ahead. I'm gonna power up the Mac Pro. And we should see, yep, there's a light that just came on. We're booted up, we have power. I've already played with this. This is actually not a bad unit for the cost. If I go ahead and I press the button back here, there you go. Drawer itself is pretty solid. And it sounds, it's got a good clank <laughs> when you close it. Now I did see there was a problem there where I kind of got it stuck on this upper lid. So, but if I place it down here and we move the camera into the down position, there we go and pop that open. Does pretty good. With everything connected, we now have our device connected to the Mac Pro. I am currently running Toast 19. One thing I have learned since I've turned off the camera is that maybe you don't need the power jack to be connected, that it might be for those systems that just don't supply enough power through the USB 3 connection. We're gonna try that. Um, but anyways, for right now, we're gonna do it this way with the power and USB 3 connected. And we are going to be burning two discs. The first one with the power connection is this verbatim double layer DVD plus RDL disc. So one of the things that I'm gonna go do is select dual layer. 
about six gigabytes is what's going to be stored on the disk. Now, I'm not going to use this setup because it'll have to go and compress the video to get it onto our shiny disk. All right, so I have my copy image file is already set. I'm gonna go ahead and press the button. We're going to put in our DVD dual layer. I figured if it can do a dual layer, all the other recording capabilities should be fine with this DVD writer spinning up. And I have noticed that this drive is really quiet. Another surprise. So this is gonna take a moment. Spinning up. I'm gonna say ignore. And we should have the drive is selected. We're gonna go ahead and copy. And let's see how long this does take. Now currently it says 43 minutes, 38 seconds. This is about as loud as some of my other drives that I have. I have the LG Blu-ray, this has got a high-pitched whine to it. So that was the one thing that uh, this one kind of drives me up the wall. But right now I'm really liking the sound of this one. There's definitely some vibration, but those feet are making it stay in place. And it does look like it's starting to write. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see, does it take 43 minutes to burn this one disc? I wanted to call out one of the things that uh, well, during the burn, we're getting this kind of the blue red flashing with the LED light that's built in next to the eject button. So that's uh, that gives you an idea of just how that works as it's burning. Coming to the end, we are at 98% completed. I'm gonna stop this. So I tracked around 31 minutes, and again, I may have been three minutes off. It started out at roughly 43, 44 minutes. So 10 minutes less than what it said, but yes, it took me at least a half hour to do just this portion of the video. The links that I go through for everyone who watches this. Now we are writing the lead out. So my fingers are crossed that this unit here is gonna finish this DVD. Otherwise this would have been a wasted 40 minutes of time. We're still, it's still cranking away. We may have our first successful burn with this $12 DVD burner, it's verifying the discs. Took a while to do the write out or the lead out of the disc itself. It kind of stayed at 30%, but eventually it did get into this phase. So we're gonna let this run and see if we have a successful disc. And then we're gonna do a test. We're gonna play this on multiple computers and OSs to see how well it works. We have a successful burn. So let's go ahead and mount it, spinning up. There's the disc. I say that's a success. Let's see if we can get to the menu. There are the different items. I am seeing some hesitation on the playback. I don't know if that's the computer, the software, whatever the case may be. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go straight to the Elite Desk Discrete Graphics Upgrade. And it does seem to be playing. Go back to menu. Let's see if it'll go into another chapter here. A little bit of hesitation. There is the other ones. Let's do a tape to CD Audacity tutorial. And that would be on the second layer, I'm gonna assume, and it works. All right, let's burn an audio CD real quick. All right, we have my YouTube music selections here. We're just gonna burn a couple of those. But this test is also to find out do I need the power cable? I'm going to go ahead and unplug that. So it's just the USB. I think that if the port supplies enough power, you won't need the power cable. I checked the directions. It doesn't say anything about that. And we're going to use my Memorex CDR as a test. We're opening up that, putting that in. There it goes. And then we're gonna go into Toast and we're burn the CD. Okay, we have the burn audio selection here. I'm just going to select this top row of music and we're going to click and drag it. It'll first convert. And those then should show up. There they are. 
We're doing it on a standard CD. You know what, let's go ahead and we're gonna do a second row because I really wanna test this out. Okay, it's adding those back in, so we should have 12 tracks now. All right, that's half of the CD. This is all audio, and we have our player selected, I'm sorry, our CD burner selected, and we're just going to go ahead and burn this. We'll just call it, and we'll just leave it audio CD for now. That's fine, don't ask again, and click OK. There we go, so let's see what happens. Is it going to burn the audio CD using just the singular USB 3 cable. My fingers are crossed that this will work. We have a successful burn. Let's go ahead and mount. And it should come up, yep, there's the CD. And we have music. Another successful burn. So we've done both the DVD, we've done the CD. Let's try this drive on various operating systems before we get to the conclusion of this video. And oh yes, if you were wondering if it is mounted on a Mac, if I click the eject button, will it come out? No. It's not doing anything. You still have to drag it to the trash can or right click it to eject. Here we have my Asus Windows 10 little laptop here and I plugged in the DVD player. I did get the bing or the bong that it was looking for the device. And it looks like it might have worked. Looks like we have power. I believe this is the USB 3 connection is on this side. I think the 2.0 is on that side. But we're going to go ahead and let's see in the DVD that we burned, will it play the DVD? It's spinning up. It's asking what we want to do. And it looks like we need to look for a DVD player app. And at this point, I'm going to say that this is successful. Actually, let me get VLC loaded on this and we'll play it from there. VLC is loaded, media, open disk or control D. Looks like it has the D drive and I'm going to click play. Will it work? And there we go. Didn't play the intro video, that was interesting. Well, hi there, and welcome to another episode of Hey, What's Next? That's successful. Windows 10 on this low-end laptop, DVD player worked fine, was recognized. Let's try Linux. And I forgot, once again, will I be able to eject the disk from just hitting the eject button? Let's find out. Yes, it will eject in Windows. The Evolve 3 is now loaded with VLC. This is running Linux Mint. The USB 3 connection is on this side. We'll get this installed here. Drive is going. We hear a bing on the laptop, throwing in my DVD. Let's see what happens. Drive is spinning up. What's happening? Nothing? All right, so let's see if we can get up. Oh, just inserted a video DVD, choose which application. What do you want to do? VLC. Click OK. Well, hi there, and welcome to another episode of Hey, What's next? Another successful test using Linux Mint, VLC, and the $12 DVD player. I cannot eject the DVD from Linux Mint, so obviously I have to do that manually. Let's try one more item. It's in storage. Let me go get it. And making its first appearance on the Hey What's Next channel, my original 1.8 gigahertz iMac G5, and yes, it still works. And believe it or not, if I go ahead and click Video Land here, and we load that up, is it safe to be on the internet with this thing? Heck no, but that's what we're doing right now. And you can download the VLC from here. So let's get VLC loaded and let's test out 
our inexpensive DVD burner and see if it'll play. VLC is loaded. I'm going to plug in this drive. I doubt seriously there's enough power coming from the USB 2.0 connection. So let's see here. I plug that in. No, not enough power. So we are going to need the second power cable, which is what I thought would happen. And we now have power. Go ahead and eject. Okay, we have the DVD drive is now ejected. Throw in our DVD, which of course this already has a burner on it, but let's see what happens on this very old, what, almost 20 year old Mac, I think as of this year, this was 2005. Okay, spinning up. There's the drive. We aren't gonna need the VLC after all. It's gonna go default right back to the DVD player built in to Mac OS 10.5. And there we go. So let's see if we can get the menu to show up here. I've updated this with a hacked version of Mac OS. All right, there we go. So if we go into menu, there's our menu. Let's go ahead and click this one and let's turn up the volume. What's next? This is the show where we explore various. All right. This DVD burner, CD burner for $12. What a steal. It's working on a variety of systems. Let me take it back to the studio for my final thoughts. Okay, the double layer DVD burn took a little bit longer than expected, but overall the drive performed very well. And it's so quiet. Also to have pluggable USB cables is a major bonus. So if one of the cables break, you should be able to find replacements rather easily instead of buying a new drive. And wouldn't you know it, this particular unit is no longer available and appears to have been replaced by this different version. While a bit more expensive by two US dollars, it does appear to have most of the same functions. The downside to this unit is the attached cable, so that's a bummer, and that touch eject button is no longer available. If it's the same mechanism, you should be good with it. Of course, I can't speak to its longevity, but for the here and now, it's working. Well. That's a wrap for today's episode. Thank you for watching. If you liked today's content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And to stay current on future episodes, click the subscribe and bell notification icons. Feel free to watch one of my other videos either here or here. And until next time, I'll see you again for another episode of Hey, What's Next?